The paints used in this video are sponsored by the Scale Modular Supply. Hi, I'm Nico and welcome to my channel. For today's video, we're going to see how the new Infinite Colors by the Scale Modular Supply holds up against an airbrush. I'm not going to test it all, just the main colors and black and white too. You'll be able to see how the other colors look once I use them on other tutorials or projects. I usually mix my paints straight into the airbrush cup, but since we're kinda doing an experiment, it's better to do it on the shot glass. So first, we're just going to use water to thin it. And whenever you thin paints for airbrushing, you want a skim milk consistency. I know some people get confused by this, but I think it's a nice baseline especially since different paint brands have different thinning ratios. Once you get a feel of your paints and how it airbrushes, you can of course adjust the thinning ratio however you see fit. The ratio that worked for me is 3 is to 1, so 3 parts paint to 1 part water. The airbrush has a 0.2 needle and the PSI is at 25. Feel free to adjust it based on what works for you. Remember to do thin coats especially with white since it's so easy to flood. Now, let's do green. So usually, colors like blue and greens are pretty opaque and thick. But I found that for this green color, I needed to use a ratio of 4 is to 1. 4 parts paint to 1 part water, since the green is surprisingly thin. Let's do the other colors. This time, I'm going to use my thinning sauce. This is a mix of Vallejo Thinner and Flow Improver. Let's see if it's compatible. I'm testing the thinning sauce with this blue color. The ratio is 3 is to 1 as well. There's no bad reaction and it seems quite compatible, so you can use it together. This one has a ratio of 3 is to 1. I use thinning sauce for this and it airbrushes really good. Usually, it's hard to get coverage with reds and yellow under a dark primer, but this one looks red to me. Not the brightest, of course, but it works. Now, let's do yellow. I hate painting yellow, so I wasn't expecting for it to work so well, especially against a gray primer. But it did just fine. It worked even better against a white primer, of course. The ratio is 3 parts paint to 1 part thinner as well. I also wanted to test if it works well even without primer since Vallejo Mecha Color can do just that. I'm using flame red with thinning sauce on a bare spoon. As you can see, it works the same. I didn't experience any flooding or the paint not sticking at all. Now, let's do the flow paints. I'm testing on bare white spoons as I didn't bother priming them. Usually, flow paints are already thinner than normal paints, so basically, no thinning required. But I always like to add a drop or two of thinner just for safety measures. This takes a couple more coats than usual too, due to how thin and transparent flow paints are. The Infinite Color has 5 flow paints, and to use it with an airbrush, you basically just need to add a drop of thinner or water, or just use it as is. You would need to do about 5 coats to get the flow effect though. I think there's actually not a big difference whether you use water or thinner. It just comes down to personal preference. Like, I still prefer to use the thinning sauce because it just gives me a sense of security that I thinned my paint right. But that's just me. I'm just saying it's perfectly fine to just use water and you don't have to buy any kind of thinner whatsoever. Now let's 
let's clean up the airbrush. So I'm just going to use water again and let's see if it gets the job done. It's kinda hard to see but there's some black paint on the cup here. Just pour some water, backflow it, then just spray it out. It works well, especially because the leftover paint is not yet dried. Now I'm going to use simple green. You can use whatever glass cleaner to clean up. Just make sure it's ammonia free. If not, it will dull the finish of your airbrush. Well, maybe I am biased since I love simple green as a cleaner. But I feel that it works better than just using water. Now let's test out the varnishes. Then let's see if these paints are durable enough for gunpla. The infinite color range has a flat clear and a semi-gloss clear. The ratio that I use for varnishes is one part varnish to one part thinner. So I have this too with the flat clear and I'm just gonna see how it holds up. I think it works great. Even better if you let it cure before doing this. But for something that was just airbrushed 10 minutes ago, it holds up pretty well. This one didn't get scratched the first time but the black paint kind of rubbed on the white. After a while, it did get a couple of micro scratches, but no flaking happened which I was expecting since there's no top coat. These two has a semi-gloss clear, and we can all clearly see how this all holds up pretty well, especially for something that was not left to cure even for about an hour. The infinite color range can be airbrushed with no problems at all. Just add water and you're basically good to go. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe and watch my other videos.